Hey guys, JK Outdoors here. Just looking at the uh, Algonquin Canoe Routes map. I'm trying to plan a late summer, early fall um, canoe trip. Probably three nights, maybe four, if I can get one more day off. Um, I did a lot of the research on my cell phone, like I usually do. Um, but uh, eventually it, it took me to a, a reservation website where I can make the reservation on my phone. But it didn't show any of the interior or uh, backcountry sites, as they call them. So um, I just want to make a quick video about how I made my reservation this year because uh, it was different. Um, it's a lot easier, and either I didn't know about it last year or it's new. So you know, I'll turn you around here and show you what I mean on the computer. Okay, I tried for like five minutes to get that perfectly square. It's not going to happen. So the first thing uh, that you should do, or what I would do, is I would find the online PDF and if you type in Algonquin canoe routes and just look for the PDF which is this one it's really good it's excellent you can zoom in and if you're not familiar with this map the um, the diamonds with the numbers in them are the access points. I guess they're actually squares, but so this one says one, two, Tim Lake, three, Hambone, four, Rain. Uh, last year I went to Booth Lake, which is access through uh, point 0.17. Here, and I stayed on crotch, and then I paddled through farm, and uh, did a couple portages, and uh, spent a couple nights on booth. And this year I want to try something different and see something new. So I think I've decided, since I live west of the park anyway, I'm gonna go to access point three and then paddle through to Daisy and then depending on how late of a start I get um, maybe stay on Daisy or get all the way to um, to the portage to Queer and Little Trout not sure and then paddle up through Little Trout and then this this is actually changed it's not called but it's called dice or something now and I think that would be a decent three or four day loop. Maybe I should be going all the way to, to Big Trout. I'm not sure. I'll see how I feel after that first day. All right, so eventually um, find your way to OntarioParks.com. And this page should open up. And you just follow through here and choose Backcountry choose the day that you want to enter the park and then choose Algonquin interior there's a disclaimer and then you can say if you're backpacking or canoeing I'm canoeing let it reload and the canoe route map pops up and they want to know how many people you're going to have on your site let that reload all right so then it's going to ask you for your access point so i've already done my research i know what access point i want to i want to go from i've written down some notes on this piece of paper about the lakes i want to see so i'm going to try Magnetowan, access point three. And it blows up access point three's reachable lakes. Now, it really shows one campsite per lake, basically. But if you hover in on that campsite for that lake, it'll tell you how many sites are on that lake and if there are any available. So, Hambone, there's no sites available. Daisy, 
there are five of six available. So let's say I'm gonna stay on Daisy the first night. You just click that, let it reload, and down here it shows me on October 11th at Daisy. And then the next date automatically populates. And if you want to stay on Daisy again that the next night, you can click it again. I'm going to try to get to Little Trout. Oh, but look. Oh, that's the side lake. Little Trout Creek booked up. But Little Trout has eight of nine sites available. So I'll take that for my second night. And then the next date automatically populates. And I think I'm going to try to stay for two nights on Little Trout. So I just click it again, select, and so on and so forth. If you're going to stay a week, then you can choose a different lake every week or the same lake. And it'll let you know if it's, if it's available to you. All right, so when you're ready, hit reserve. And you can acknowledge the conditions. And then pay. And you can put in your email address here. And then there's a few more disclaimers. And then you put in your credit card. And then there's a, there was a $9 fee for my three-night or four-night stay. So there is a, a website fee. But the, the phone recording said it was actually cheaper to do it this way. So, so I hope you found that helpful. Um, the first time I made a reservation, you know, it was kind of confusing for me. And uh, as everything is, the first time you do it. And um, I think that it's still important to get this map. And... If you can order it online, just do it. Um, I bought mine when I got there, um, but don't try to navigate your whole course on your cell phone or tablet or something. I just I think it's just a bad idea. This is a really good map. You could make notes on there um, about what your favorite site was, or you know if you found a beaver dam or something that's not on here. And it it turns out to be really valuable. I've been I've been carrying around this this map of Michigan for. 20 years and every time I, I go on a trip, you know, I'll see all this, but I make, I make notes about campsites that I find and things and, uh, you know, you won't remember it. At least I won't remember it unless I write it down. So I hope uh, this was uh, helpful for some people and uh, maybe I'll see you out there.